In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to customize your time shift using the Action Camera Center. You can do more than simply expand the duration of the clip, making it slow motion or shrinking it, making it very fast motion by customizing other features now available in the Action Camera Center for time shift segments. We're going to look at how to do that in this tutorial. To apply a time shift in the Action Camera Center, you do not take the clip and drag it to the timeline. You leave it in the media room and then you highlight it and click on the plugins menu at the very top and then choose the Action Camera Center option. That will open the Action Camera Center tool. Now you have two tabs in the upper left corner. One is Fix and one is Effect. We want to be on the Effect tab. There are two effects, a time shift and freeze frame. We have another tutorial dealing more with the freeze frame. We're going to focus on the time shift, so I'll expand that panel. I notice that I have more controls than simply the speed control. I now have a replay control, stop motion, and zoom and pan. That's what we're going to focus on in this particular tutorial. Now to create a time shift, you move the playhead. You can use the marker below the preview screen or the marker that shows you all of your frames below. They're linked together. And you go to the location where you want it to start. And then you click on Create Time Shift. You can use either the button in the lower left corner or the button in the upper left corner. They do the same thing. So I'm going to click on that. And now I have a Time Shift segment. To see how long the segment is, I click on the Speed Control. Let's expand those controls and see the default here is 2 seconds and 9 frames. I can enlarge it on either end and I'm going to see the time code change here so I can be as precise as I want as I begin to see how much of my initial clip I want to modify using this. We'll start with 5 seconds. Now when we start using this what we'll find is nothing will happen. I'm going to apply a speed effect by clicking on it. It will turn yellow when it's active and editable. I'll click on here and now the speed is 1.00. Nothing basically changes. So I can take it and play the clip and when I move into the timecode segment there's no change. To make it go faster or slower there's two ways to do that. Once again we highlight it and then I can choose either the slider to multiply it. If I multiply it, that will make it faster. Or if I go the other way and the numbers are larger, that will make it slow motion. Or the other way I can do it is simply use the time code and change the numbers there. It was 5 seconds. Let's go to 7 seconds and 0 frames. And now we see we, we have multiplied it by a 0.714 which makes it longer, which makes it slower. So if I start here and we move into our segment, we're going to see it's going to be a little bit of slow motion. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, up till now, this has been basically the control that you have. Let's look at some other controls that are new in more recent versions of PowerDirector. We can use the speed effect. I'm actually going to turn it off to show you the other options that we have. We have another option here called Stop Motion. So I'm going to shrink the speed controls and turn on the Stop Motion controls and click on Apply Stop Motion. Now we haven't affected the speed. We've temporarily disabled that. But watch what happens when we play this with Stop Motion. We move into our segment and then we have these breaks, these missing frames as it were, where it becomes more jerky during the course of that time segment. I'll click on it again to highlight it. Let's crank it way up to about a 40. Numbers go from 0 to 50. Let's play this again. And now we're normal and now lots of frames seem to be missing. Notice the jerkiness here. But if that's the effect that you want, you can apply it now to any sub-segment of a clip using the stop motion controls. We'll highlight it again. I'm going to turn that particular value off. Another one we have is zoom and pan now. We can customize with that. Now the zoom and pan gives you the op opportunity to zoom in and out on a particular segment of your video. 
So I'm going to move the playhead over here. I've got my zoom area here. If I want to do the entire screen in my zoom, I simply click on it. You notice it added a yellow marker. This is a bit like a keyframe. And if I enlarge it here, now it's full size. It doesn't do anything. And I can use the mouse to change the size and the location anywhere I want. Let's back out of our clip and we'll play it. And now we see it will zoom in and then it will zoom out. Now if I want to keep it at that level, I can also do that. We'll click on the clip again, we'll stop our play, and we'll go farther into here. I'm going to, going to take this and rezoom it. Now unfortunately you can't copy the previous zoom. You have to estimate if you want it to look more, more or less identical in size and location. So we'll back up here. And now I have two keyframes, key as it were, inside for zoom. Let's play this one. Zooms in on this guy. And it stays zoomed, and then it zooms back out. Again, the goal of the software is to, at the beginning and the end, be identical to the frames it merges into. So it will be full screen either way. So you can put as many keyframes in here as you want, simply by clicking on the diamonds with a plus in it. Let's do one in the middle where we zoom back out to full screen. This will be rather erratic, but you get to see how it works. We'll play this way. And now we apply the zoom, go back full screen, and then we apply it again, and then it goes back to full screen. So you can add as many zoom ins and zoom outs to pan and zoom as you want to. Now, If you want to make any of them go away, we'll stop the play. Click back in here. We click on any of these and click the garbage can, and that will make it disappear. So that's how we remove it. Or the other way you can remove it is you can click and click on the minus diamond key. That will remove it as well. So you can do both speed control and pan and zoom and stop motion all in the same segment. But there's another thing you can do. Let's look at this replay option. The replay option gives you the ability, we'll click again so to get to edit, we'll do apply replay and reverse. Now the reverse is option. When it replays, it will start with the number two and you can go up as many times as you want. What it will do is it will take that segment, however you've modified it, and it will replay it. So watch what happens when we move into this. We'll go back to our play mode, we'll move into our segment, and we'll play it. It moves through normally, slightly slower, and then we've got the zoom and slightly slower. Now why didn't it zoom in twice? Let me show you why. We'll stop it here, and there is apply effect to last play or first play. Now if you have more than two, it's only going to affect the first one or the last one. Right now, the, the time shift, the actual speed up or slow down, will apply to every single frame inside this segment. But these tools, the replay tool, the zoom and pan control, the stop motion control, are applied either to the first time through or the last time through. Right now we had it set to last time through. Let's change that to first time through. Now you're going to see a difference. We click here and we'll play it. First time through, it does zoom, and it backs out. It'll go through one more time. Second time through, it doesn't. So you can use that effect either on the first of a series or the last of a series, not on every single roll through the series. Now, you can also add a reverse as well. Let's add a reverse, and remember, now it's going to apply to the first time through, not the last time through. So we'll play it again. Hit our play key. First time through, we get our zoom effect. Now it reverses. You notice it will actually back up below. Second time through, it goes through. It will not reverse or magnify. So those are some of the modifications you can make using the replay option. 
So you have zoom and pan now and stop motion and replay as well as simple speed control. And the interesting thing is if you want to keep the speed normal you can leave it at one like we did here and not change the speed at all but still apply these other tools to that segment in the video. I'm going to click on the OK button and what it will do is it will take that video and put it into my timeline wherever my cursor happens to be. So the location of your cursor is important when you begin to launch this tool. Now if I want to go back and change it, if I don't like it the way it is, I simply double click on it and that will reload the Action Camera Center. I can get back in here and change anything I want.